It's another Manly Monday, and this Monday we are talking good ego, bad ego. And why am I taking it this way? Um, well, because I have holes in the background. Um, but you tend to hear the term male ego as if it's always a bad thing. And I don't agree. Right, Cthulhu? Right. Cthulhu's ready this this uh, this Manly Monday. But I don't think it's it's a bad thing. The reality is that you do need some ego to get through the world. That's just true. Um, if you're, you're constantly humble and self-effacing, you don't get very far. And so the challenge is to separate good parts of ego or good, good ego, healthy ego from unhealthy ego. And I mean, the general rule of thumb, because I sat and I, I sort of um, compared the two things. And this came out of the fact that I realized over the weekend that um, some of the comments that are, it's all women's fault in, in the comment sections of these videos, sound exactly like the flip side of what women used to say about men in feminist groups I used to be a part of. And I found that very, very interesting. Um, and again, my working theory about this is that too much gender theory doesn't look at both sides of the coin at the same time. So men's issues about men and women's issues about women, but there's never a, a, a communication like across the two things. And when you actually do step back and look at what both sides are saying, it just seems like everybody's talking past each other. So if you like this sort of content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Both types of support would be very, very useful Right now, I once again do have a wait list for Leanna Care's sessions. So just putting it out there because of issues like this in part. Um, but yeah, I, I read these articles on the male ego and they make it seem like some magical, unique thing that women just can't possibly understand and just just have to tiptoe around it and 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 pet the puppy right one guy who claimed to be an expert on men calls it the jujube doll that if a woman ever is critical crush like it, it just makes guys just seem so weak on the one hand which is is not true there's a difference between treating someone with dignity and respect and having to coddle somebody. And that's my issue with a lot of content on the male ego. It makes men seem like they need to be coddled. And one, that's not true. True, a lot of guys I know would rather die than think that's what women think about them. And that's the advice women are being given regarding men. And... When you look at the advice what women should do with male ego, heteronormative, yes, uh, it's actually stuff people should just be doing for people. And that's what strikes me because it's, you know, look at the larger picture. This is from an article on Psych Central. Is the problem with this particular man or what's influenced him to this point? Well, that's just good advice for anyone, right? You don't want to make the fundamental attribution error. Right. Help him see his behavior through your eyes. Sure. Um, if he acts superior, disrespectful or sexist, consider having a conversation about the impact his action or remarks can have on those around him. Well, again, that's true of everyone. You know, let him know what you value in him. Try to focus on the internal, not external things such as money, appearance, job, etc. Helping him see his worth is measured by more than those things can be crucial. Again, Good advice for everyone. Be an active listener. If he's stressed about something or feeling sad, try to act, lis listen actively and with empathy. And again, this is just rules for people. And, you know, the, the, the 
problem that I see over and over and over again in this stuff, and this is not just men and women, this is people again, is when it comes to going into listening mode, when it comes to being kind, so many people are like, you first, him first, her first, she started it, he started it. That is bad ego. And uh, I had an interesting experience with that uh, over the weekend where, uh, you know, I was, I was doing my typical, let's do an experiment on something. And uh, I, I, I made a comment about journalism and, you know, the whole Amber Heard thing saying it's going to be taught in, you know, in media classes is what not to do PR wise, but also that journalists should never report to a narrative uh, because the r risk of backfire is so high and you're basically fighting a war against yourself. And, you know, that that went viral and some Amber Heard fans were none too happy about that and uh it, it it went on and on and on and on but i there was some cross tweeting and i got something mixed up and this amber heard stan demanded an apology from me uh and a bunch of dep heads were like no she doesn't have to apologize it was you know honest all that i'm like no you know what i got confused i apologized for that and they said, you shouldn't have to apologize. And they, they, I'm like, but it takes nothing from me. Admitting when you've made a mistake is a is strength, not weakness. Of course, within three exchanges, the guy I responded to, well, assuming it's a guy, the icon was Herman Munster. But um, within three exchanges, they fucked up. And then everybody said they should apologize. And of course, it was a bunch of non-apology apologies. And they look terrible. That is the example of good ego versus bad ego. My ego is healthy enough that I can go, ah, you know what? Meh, sure, sorry, no big deal. <laughs> you know, it certainly doesn't invalidate my central premise. So what's the big deal? But, oh, they, no, they, it was, I'll apologize when you admit, no, 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 no. That's bad ego, right? Rule of thumb, good ego focuses on the positives, right? It's good to admit when you're wrong. And if it's good when other people admit you're wrong, you should set an example. That's... That's the definition of good ego for me, feeling like you're important enough, you're noteworthy enough to be somebody people will take cues from, somebody that you have to set, you have to set an example because people will follow your example. And that's something I really had to learn with YouTube uh, is, you know, rule number one of YouTube, show you can take a hit. Um, bad ego focuses on negatives. And, you know, the you did this and you did that and I'm not going to show weakness and I'm not going to apologize because they never let you live it down. I don't care if they never let me live it down. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. And my ego is big enough that, yeah, okay, they might use it against me. I don't give a shit. They're who to me, right? And the, the issue is you don't tend to see that in women, right? And so you get women, and this is not a bad thing, okay? It just is. People seek approval of others. It's a benchmark to let us know how we're doing in life right? There are some people whose opinions matter, some people whose opinions don't. This is, this is just, right, this is just humans. And yeah, sometimes you, you have to do things you feel are right, even though there's going to be disapproval, but people in general like the people that they respect approving of them. So a lot of women seek 
male approval. A lot of men seek women appro female approval, but then um, women also seek the approval of other women a lot. And men, you know, based on the response to Feedback Friday, there's that uh, men seeking approval of other men as well. And, you know, you get gender non-conforming folk like myself going, where do we fit? What are we supposed to do? How do we navigate this stuff? Right. And again, I just think generally you can't bruise too easily, right? Something may sting, but when something stings, it's better to take a moment and engage on that, that good ego, uh, you know, because I've had to deal with a lot of things lately where it's like, yeah, that hurt. It sucks that they have that opinion of me, but they're just wrong. You know, now some people may call that arrogant. Well, I don't give a shit because I'm not going to believe I'm wrong until someone persuades me. I'm wrong. I'm not going to change my mind on something or lose faith in my convictions because of a numbers game. God, especially on the internet. But even in, uh, even in life, I'm just one of those people. Appeal to my logic. Show me where I've gone wrong. Because if it's just, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, because we say so, well, how am I supposed to correct it? I can't. You know, I'm just inert at that point. And I spent too many years doing that. So now it's basically, I'm going to keep going along this path until you give me an alternative path. Because otherwise it's stopping and I'm just too busy to stop. See, again, some people would say that's arrogant. I say that's healthy ego. You know, um, I say it's healthy because that means I can take a few hits. I'm not just going to cave. Because people yell at me, but I'm still open, you know, to feedback that makes sense. If someone makes a valid point, you know, like on Feedback Friday, I'm still chewing that over. Like people made a lot of sense. It's like, okay, that tracks on a lot of things. And it made me think because good ego makes you resilient. Bad ego makes you stupid. Good ego means you can stop and hear out other people because just because you're listening to somebody doesn't mean you have to do what they say. Bad ego is that kind of ego where people can never shut up. And I think it is that thing the commenter said on Friday that talking indicates alpha status to some people and having to, you know eat shit in silence makes people feel like they're being dominated. And again, if you got a healthy ego, it's a little different. Like, you guys have no idea how much shit I eat in silence. The stuff I respond to is maybe 15% of what I get in a given day. That's why I wear the Galactus shirt. Okay. Um... You know, but that that's the thing that when I started doing YouTube, I thought, oh, I'm just, you know, one of the guys, for lack of a term. I'm a gamer. We're going to talk about gamers. And so I acted like a typical gamer, meaning I'll quit it was a regular thing. But because and, and part of it, I admit, is I didn't want to seem arrogant or all that and all that stuff because I know that you know women get socially punished for behaving that way it's just true it's documented please don't fight me on that uh but I realized with YouTube and 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 this is one of those weird things you have to show you can laugh things off you have to show you can take some hits you have to develop a healthy ego because otherwise you spend all your time lashing out at every perceived aggression and transgression and regression and other aggressions, right? All the aggressions. And I, I watch people in comment sections who fucking complain about 
everything. And I admit, I'm going to be blunt here. They seem like miserable, pathetic little weaklings. Galactus, um, do, do I want to seem that way? Hell no. So I'm not going to do that, right? And, you know... The other thing about good ego versus bad ego is when it's, it's bad ego, nothing is ever enough. You can't look at the stuff you've accomplished and go, you know what? Pretty good. I'm not quite where I want to be, but I'm further ahead than I was one step at a time, you know, take a minute and, and reflect on the progress. A bad ego is nothing's enough. You're constantly focused on perceived threats aggrievement not enough having to fight back instead of you know i keep saying superman with you know the 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 bullets bouncing off of them that tickles you know that whole thing um i think i've i've given enough difference between good ego and bad ego and the thing that's tough is that you'll see people as like oh that guy's got such an ego and yeah, it's not a compliment, but let's face it, guys are allowed to get away with that to a point because, you know, when you get competing egos, then things can get really messy and that's when things can get, you know, unhealthy for everyone involved. And I came across an interesting term called the glass ego. And, you know, it was, it was an article, a link to it. It's, it, it really seems, the, it, the, the article seems like somebody trying to sell books. But it's all about the fact that women don't realize how much power they have to wound the men in their lives. And I really wish... Again, articles like this could be done as a point counterpoint. So there's more of a give and take because I know I have to, I have to check myself and remind myself who the article is written for, right? Because it, it's very one-sided and I know that whenever I give a piece of advice, well-meaning to guys, hey, this is something you need to know about, you know, generalities about women. People take it as an attack. And again, my ego is healthy enough to not do that. So it's like, oh, yeah, that, that's what people do. And, you know, because I can get through something like this, because I have to read so much crap just to know what various parts of the culture were saying. Um, I actually had to read last week. Somebody decided to forward me excerpts of two people talking shit about me behind my back in emails. And it was like, well, this is interesting. Good to know what they're saying. You know, that's how fucking numb I am to this shit. And I, I do have to take moments and remember what it used to feel like. And that can be pretty tough because that's when the ego starts kicking in, right? It's like, no, 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 don't want to go back there. And and some some things I think are actually toxic and you shouldn't have to go back. But other things are just human nature and, and you do have to, you know, be resilient and step back in. So I, I'm saying this because, yes, I'm linking to the article for people to read it. But I, I do think that um, it, it risks making men, some men feel uncomfortably vulnerable reading it. And a lot of women feel blamed reading it. And that, that's what you try to avoid in this stuff, right? Which is what the article is basically saying. A person can only take feeling so vulnerable and a person can only take so much blame. But one of the things I found interesting about the article is that men 
they, they argue, and this may be true because I get into trouble for this. Men tend to take communications more literally than women. And so th certain things, certain specific complaints land with a greater punch on men than women. And I speak, I get criticized a lot for being too literal in meat space, not on the internet. I have to code switch a lot. So I end up being not literal enough on the internet and too literal in meat space. It's real fun, let me tell you. Uh, but so I, I kind of get that. Um, and it, it is, see, I think, I think the advice in the article is wrong because it says, don't use specific, like you're so irresponsible because men in this case, and but I think this is true of anyone have trouble, um, with, you know, separating, okay, they're saying I'm being this, not that I am this in general. Um, the, the judgment stings because it's very specific it's a very specific summary as opposed to you know you're being an asshole you're being a jerk though I know people that that bothers too so that's why I think the advice is wrong because it said you know if you want to keep a man around don't use the word irresponsible you can call him a jerk or even an ass and it won't devastate him because what is a jerk that's not concretely definable Right. But a man, but what a man feels when you call him irresponsible is what a woman feels when you call her a bitch. It's the ultimate insult. So if you're angry at a man, just call him a bitch. I don't think that's good advice. I don't think that um, people should name call in general because name calling can invoke past traumas and you really don't know what your what you're tripping what trip wires you're hitting when you do that i to me a better way of going about it for everyone is you know focus on the negative impact it had on you right like you know you didn't clean the stuff up and so i had to do it which means i didn't get this other stuff done and you said you were going to do it, man. Now, I like the uh, advice this article gave by if a guy doesn't pick things up, say it once, say it twice, and then burn the fucking thing. I mean, that's how I solve problems and it gets me into trouble. But people stop doing that. Now, it also breeds resentment sometimes. And that's because there's a different, you know, giving that advice to women, I think, is really bad because women fulfill a particular role with men and this is something I have to check myself in all the time because people see woman even though I don't know what the fuck that means and so a guy can do something to another guy and it's totally fine I say the exact same thing who bruised ego and this is not good or bad it just is and it's something to keep in mind, which is why I'm just like, I'm just going to avoid those sorts of insults with people I like and want to keep around, period. Because then you don't step on anything. Because the reality is I, I dug for any sort of science on some sort of unique male ego. And it's really friggin' vague. And this surprised me. That some things, okay, we see. Other things, it's like one or two studies. And that's it. So generally, and this is a rule of thumb for everything, individuality trumps any sort of group behavior, right? Just because it's typical or common for men to do something doesn't mean all men do it. Same with women. And I think people forget this. And I think that if something is the something the majority does, people confuse that for they should do it. And again, that's where good ego, bad ego comes in. Because me, I had to, I had to find a way to own being weird. And that's a big part of 
my ego. Like, yeah, I'm a freaking weirdo. And I'm used to being despised since... The first time I remember somebody hating me, I was four years old. And it's sort of become, you know, I've got an inner Skeletor. That, yeah, he's the bad guy, but come on. People think Skeletor is cool. And, yeah, Skeletor may lose a lot, but he's the guy that drives the plot. That's how I decided to take it. Because I could either feel bad about this reality... And constantly be trying to twist myself into pretzels to please other people and never win. Or I could just go, you know what? What do I like about myself? I'm not going to change that. The other things, yeah, I know there's some things I have to work on. But, you know, a big part of it is was and is going forward being more aware of how people perceive me. And that's really tough because you got to... Be aware of that without mind reading, right? Uh, Wellness Wednesday is going to be about projection. Uh, and, and so is it's not therapy this week. But, you know, so I had to sort of develop that fake supervillain ego. And it worked. You know, there, there are good sides to an ego. But here are the, the things that people say about male ego that... May not be true. The, the first one is the male ego bruises easily. Um, there's not many studies about this, but this article that I will link to, there will be two. Uh, 2013 studies said some men subconsciously feel worse about themselves when their female partner succeeds in a situation where they may not have. In one experiment, men who believed their partner scored higher on a test had lower self-esteem than those who believed their partner scored lower, but more research is needed. Notice it says some men. That's one freaking study indeterminate, right? And the fact that we don't have data makes me wonder why there's something missing here, right? Next one. The man with a big ego thinks he's more intelligent than a woman. You know, it's all comparative intelligence. Interesting, but... Check this out. In a 2021 study, males reported higher intelligence and self-esteem, general and academic, than females. But they also found that females tend to underestimate in these areas compared to men. So perhaps it's not that men have too much ego and it's that women don't have enough. And there are so many reasons for that, but this is Manly Monday. Uh, Not about women. Men don't cry or get emotional. This is a Big one. Uh, And I've talked about this before and it's really contentious. A 2016 study said women cry two to four times more often than men. But researchers note that several factors such as personality, attachment style, culture, and mental health may play a role in when and how frequently men cry. And, you know... We do know that men are not taught, men are not trained or raised, whatever word you want to do, to express their emotions as much or in the same way that women do. So we're going to have an apples to oranges comparison. And just because a guy doesn't cry doesn't mean he's not feeling hurt or sad. And, you know, there are biochemical elements of that. But I think it's really important not to equate crying with more emotion or cry or not crying with a lack of sadness. That's really important. Uh, And then the last one, big ego equals sexual prowess, bravery, strength. A 2020 study suggests that their words, not mine here. Toxic masculinity can create the belief that men should behave in a certain way, such as showing toughness, mental and physically. So the the argument about this means this and sexual prowess and toughness and bravery and strength, that's what makes you a man. Well, bravery and strength are good for everybody, right? Toughness to an extent should be good for everybody. Um, The sexual prowess thing is something I really think needs to stop. That's the thing. 
having more sex does not make you more of a man. Having less sex does not make you less of a man. I mean, look at all the damn uh, movies, you know, like martial arts movies and stuff like that. Or, you know, the Jedi don't form attachments, all that stuff. That's just, I really do think that that is harmful. Because first of all, if you're spending an inordinate amount of time either feeling bad that you're not having as much sex as you think you should, because everybody's drive is at a different level, right? That's a waste of time. Feeling bad about something you can't control, that's a waste of time. Worse is spending a lot of time, money, energy, and effort on something you're supposed to be or supposed to do instead of something that you legitimately enjoy. I can think of no bigger waste of time than doing something just because you think you're supposed to. And so I think that, again, uh, you know, the, the other thing, the other thing is counterintuitively, if you seem really intent on sex, 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 like women are going to run screaming, you know, get mad at me if you want, but this is why I give the advice that I do. You know, this is why I say don't announce things in generalities about your sex, your sexual preferences, unless you are basically asked, like unless it's relevant, don't just announce. It just, for so many reasons, because keep, keep in mind, women are trained to prevent assault. So you seem incredibly interested in that, you know, that can, that can scare people off. And then you go, well, then who is this for? And that's a good question. Because I think that a lot of these things that men are supposed to be and women are supposed to be, I think there are a lot of people that don't terribly like those demarcations. Because, you know, you guys know I, I, I love my song. I love my girly girl. And she is legitimate a girly girl. You know, and I will defend that to the fucking death, her right to be that because I'm not I have the Galactus shirt. Right. But my thought is if she can be that, then I can be me and both are equally valid as opposed to one being what you're supposed to be, because that's just her. Right. But I'm me. And this isn't better or worse. It's just different. And it's the same. I mean, we talk all the time on Two Women Talking tomorrow about our, our different, you know, our different preferences regarding guys and male characters in fiction and things like that, in part to show people that there are different tastes. Different women want different things. And instead of twisting yourself into a pretzel, you are never going to manage just be your best self. Just develop, you know, whatever fits best instead of going for this one size fits all approach. Because, I mean, I, I couldn't be her if I tried and she couldn't be me. Our brains just work differently. And I think that's true of, of guys as well. And I see a lot of really um, smart, funny sensitive in a good way, compassionate, caring, you know, guys getting not great reactions and it tends to come down to trying to be something they're not, trying to fit into this box of what an ideal man is. And, and part of what I hope to do with Two Women Talking is show there's really no such thing across the board. And, you know, the pendulum swings, right? Different things become trendy at different times. And I can't stand that. And I'll, I'll close with this, which is why I care about that. But this is an ego thing, too, because, you know, 
I'm hyper aware of ego because I had to develop certain personas for TV. I had to write in a male voice for television for seven years. So I got sort of an insight on performative ego. But it was the thing of, I remember there was a time it was in the, I don't remember, but somebody said, oh, full butts are in now. You're, you're great. And I'm like, how is a body part in or out? Like full butts are in now. What happens when they go out? Do I have to take off my ass? And, you know, that was somebody thinking they were compl complimenting me. But I was like, no, I reject this premise that body types are in or out. It should be, people should be able to find stuff that is flattering and fits and is, you know, suits them no matter when. That's crazy. But in order to push for this stuff, you know, uh, Moses Neimer, who was the founder of uh, City TV, the place I used to work, uh, he does Zoomer magazine and I think he was Classical 96 and he just bought one of those blog, like blog TO or something like that. But dude got an ego on him. Whoo! But he had a slogan that TV is what happened to me today. And it's actually is a, is a really good rule of thumb when you're thinking about how to appeal to an audience. Because when somebody's sitting down at the end of the day and they're choosing what to watch, yeah, that's the whole for them. Um, but I mean, there's a guy who you used to hear all the time. He's got a huge ego, but look what he did with it. And that's basically at the end of the day, what it's about is your ego working for you, good ego, or working against you, bad ego. That's it. And we're done. I'll support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it so they can work out some of this stuff. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching Manly Mondays.